Today we're going to see how efficiently I can catch every fish in Animal Crossing New Horizons. And what I mean by that is catching all 80 fish in as few catches as possible. This challenge has a good bit of strategy to it. Of course you don't know what fish you're going to catch before you catch it, so being very selective with what fish you're catching at particular times of the year is very important, for example. Of course you also need to have a good understanding of fish shadow sizes knowing what shadow size of the fish you're looking for and being able to differentiate different shadow sizes from one another is going to be very important too. I'm calling it the efficiency challenge. Oh no. Like all of our challenges, we will start it from a new island. During the tutorial, I picked up extra sticks to make a couple fishing rods to hit the ground running. Now we're starting this challenge at August at 9 p.m., meaning here's the fish available to us right now. Except, not really, because there's more to it than that. If we narrow down that list to fish that have zero total catch requirement, then we're left with this. And that's another important aspect to this challenge. Fish will become more available the more total fish that we catch, with more fish unlocking after we've crossed the 20, 50, and 100 total fish threshold. Generally, rarer fish require a higher total amount of fish caught, which is why you'll never catch a coelacanth as your first catch, for example. That being said, there are still some decently uncommon fish available right now that don't require any fish to be caught. Specifically, I'm eyeballing that snapping turtle and surgeon fish. If we can get those early, that would be very nice indeed. Problem is, the uncommon snapping turtle shares the same shadow size as the very common black bass, which I would be less thrilled to catch. But, as luck would have it... Thus making the snapping turtle the first catch of this challenge. We have to donate five unique fish to Tom Nook to summon blathers to our island to progress the story. I'd quite like to get all five in the minimum amount of catches. After catching a sweet fish, surgeon fish, crucian carp, and red snapper, we've done just that. We do need to get to the point where we can get a ladder for the golden trout, char, cherry salmon, and string fish later on, so that's why this challenge requires the museum tent to be built. It'll also require the shop being built, so we'll gather up some wood for doing that eventually as well. Blathers also gives us DIYs for a vaulting pole and a shovel, both useful, maybe the shovel more so for farming bait. I made a mistake and caught a duplicate red snapper, so I guess that's perfect run over, right? Well, technically not. Now, to be very clear, I'm not striving for a perfect score. I don't even think I'm going to get close. But the theoretical best score for this challenge would be 105 total catches. Not 80, since remember that some fish require 100 total catches to spawn. Five of them to be exact. So if you caught all 75 fish within that first 100, and then these five on top of it without duplicates, then you will have achieved a perfect score for this challenge. I cannot begin to explain how unbelievably hard that would be though, considering there are just so many rare fish that share shadow sizes with very common fish that it's just inevitable that you're going to get repeats. After making some bait, we head now to the pond where we haven't caught anything yet, so anything that we do catch will be new, guaranteed. First a carp, and then a frog, putting us at 9 catches, 8 of them being unique. Then we get a pufferfish, a horse mackerel, a seahorse, a tilapia, and a rock. Luckily, trash, such as rocks, cans, boots, and tires, do not count towards angling for perfection, which is what we're using to count our total catches. So catching trash is luckily not a big deal. I took a risk trying to get a pretty common zebra turkey fish, only end up with another puffer fish. Same thing happened when trying to get a black bass, where I end up getting another tilapia, and then again getting a sweet fish when I wanted a dace. And you might be beginning to understand why getting a low score on this challenge is pretty difficult. We get a killifish for our 20th total catch, thus unlocking a new wave of fish that can spawn. Here's a list of all the fish that are now available after having met their spawning requirement. A lot of them are still fairly common, but you can definitely see a notable increase in the rarity of some of these fish. We pick up a crawfish and a catfish, both of which have been available since the start, putting us now at 22 total fish caught, 15 of them being unique. Then we get repeats of the crucian carp and the sweet fish before getting our first dace. Then a clownfish, and what I would consider our first rare fish of this challenge, a saddled bee shear, which was one of many fish unlocked with 20 catches. 
Two other fish that were unlocked were the hammerhead shark and the sucker fish. So I knew when I came across this finned fish that it was going to be one of those two. Unfortunately, it was the more common sucker fish. Barred knife jaws were also recently unlocked, and that puts us at 20 unique fish after 31 catches. One fish that's going to be a particular pain in the butt is the giant trevally, a rare peer exclusive fish that shares its shadow size with a sea bass and olive flounder. That's going to be one of quite a few fish that require a lot of bait to catch. After horse mackerel and pufferfish repeat, we get an angelfish, a zebra turkey fish, and our next fin fish does end up being a hammerhead shark. Then after sea bass, sea bass, sea bass, we get a soft shelled turtle from the river. We're close now to 50 total catches, which is another threshold of fish to be unlocked. And then we do, after catching another sea bass. Now that we have another wave of fish unlocked, we should consider switching up what time we're fishing. Since we've been in August this entire time, it would be smart to go to January so that we can get a lot of the new fish that we haven't seen yet, and make it so that a lot of the ones that we've already caught will not show up. Here's a list of all the fish that we unlocked with 50 total catches. A few that catch my eye that we just unlocked are the tuna, blue marlin, and oarfish, all three being available in January. Of course, there are still quite a few fish that have carried over from August. But eventually, we do find something new like a bitterling, dab, pond smelt, goldfish, koi, and football fish. And in the process of all this, I have been passively farming bait, which has served us well when we use it on the pier. The next threshold of fish to be unlocked is 100 total catches, and then after that, every fish becomes available. So the plan is to get our catches up to 100 in the best manner possible. And while I'm not trying to go for a high score, there's definitely a lot of potential to improve since I've personally struggled a lot on differentiating sea bass sized fish from bigger fish. Probably the most important skill to have in this challenge. Another is patience. You can take as much time as you need waiting for the fish that you want to show up. A lot of times though, you'll find yourself growing impatient and just catching everything that you see hoping that it's new. But unlike a lot of challenges that I do, I'm not putting a timer on screen to see how long it takes, rather doing it at my own pace. This whole challenge took me a week or so to complete, but that's alright. In many ways, it's a less stressful and enjoyable way to play the game that I would recommend some of you try if you're looking to rekindle your excitement for the game. And if you do end up completing it, you should tweet me or post it in my Discord what score you got. And if you're an Animal Crossing content creator, I would love to see how well you do as well. Anyway, this freshwater goby gets us up to 86 total catches, with 44 of them being unique. So we're still catching a new fish with about half of our catches. That pace won't last forever though, as we still have some real stinkers yet to catch. It's now the morning of May, and we're trying to get a Mahi Mahi, which was unlocked at 50 total catches. It's yet another fish that shares its shadow size with the sea bass, making it possibly one of the more painful fish that we have to catch. Combined with the fact that it takes a lot of bait as well, and you have a recipe for being a really annoying fish to catch. We don't catch it right now, but for our efforts, we do get a butterfly fish, and we finally cross the 100 fish threshold. Here's a list of every fish we've caught so far, in case you've lost track. With 100 fish caught, that unlocks a short but painful list of fish that now spawn. The golden trout, stringfish, dorado, barrel eye, and coelacanth. I need not belabor the point of why these fish will be of particular difficulty. We set time to winter, so we get a sea butterfly from the ocean, and from fishing off the pier... ...an oarfish. Since it's after 9pm, the blowfish is available, and also the barrel eye. Being that the barrel eye shares a shadow size with the horse mackerel, I knew it was going to be tough to get. But there is a pretty clever trick that you can use to tell fish of the same size apart. 
Fish that are more common have a wider field of vision to see your bobber. Rarer fish have a much smaller field. So if you really wanted to test whether the fish that you're about to catch is rare or not, aim your bobber slightly to the side of the fish's head, and if they see it right away, it's likely pretty common. But if they don't notice it at first, you could be on for a rare catch. Utilizing this mechanic could save you a lot of unnecessary catches if you have the effort with which to try. So that's 142 total fish now thanks to the barrel eye taking so long, with 50 of them being unique. The plan is to now go throughout the year and catch whatever fish is most optimally caught in that month. There's a fish calculator tool that's handy for this where you can scroll through every month and see the spawning rates of every fish that's available that month. For March, the tadpole and stringfish are most optimally caught at the following times. The tadpole is easy enough, being very common, but the stringfish, as we all know, will not be so easy. Luckily, the stringfish is unique in that it's the only fish available right now that has a very large shadow size in the river. So while it might take a while to find, you'll know it's a stringfish when you do eventually see it. First though, we need to get the shop built and get three housing plots placed down to earn the recipe for the ladder. Took about an hour and several stacks of bait, but we did get the string fish eventually. Now in April, we need a loach and a neon tetra. The neon tetra definitely gives us a little trouble considering pale chubs and guppies also share the neon tetra's size and are as common, if not more. So it racks up our counter a little bit, but not too badly. And loaches are extremely common at 4 p.m., so we snag one of those quite easily. In May, we have just two fish to catch, but they are some doozies. The Mahi Mahi at 9 a.m. and the Golden Trout at 4 p.m. I maintain that the Mahi Mahi is the hardest fish to catch in this game. I've thought this for a while, and this challenge only reinforces that fact. It truly is the trifecta of being annoying. It has an annoying spawn location, that being the pier only. Its size is annoying, as it shares it with the sea bass, and it's just so annoyingly rare. 1% chance at its peak, and never any more than that. So the process is to grind bait, craft bait, throw bait, catch a sea bass, repeat. For hours on end. It ran the counter up about 60 catches, but we did eventually get one. And now we need a golden trout, which thankfully proves to be a lot easier taking only eight more catches. Now June, where we just need a whale shark, and like all sharks, they're easy to tell apart from other fish because of their fin, but we might get a couple of sneaky sucker fish in there as well. But we don't. In July, we need a Napoleon fish in the morning, and then the Great White Shark in the evening. Now, if you're good at telling shadow sizes apart, getting a Napoleon fish shouldn't be too hard. Unfortunately for me, I am not. With that done, we move on to August, where we need a giant snakehead, a ribbon eel, and an ocean sunfish. It takes a little bit of bait and a couple of carps, but we do get the giant snakehead before too long. The ribbon eel is only one of two fish in the game with the narrow shadow size along with the moray eel. Unfortunately for me, with both of them being available right now, we have to suffer through catching a couple of those before we do eventually get one. And then the ocean sunfish is one of three fin fish available right now, sharing that distinction with the suckerfish and the whale shark, which is definitely not annoying. There we go. Now in September, we have quite a few fish that we need to catch. The nibblefish is the only one that we need in the morning. The salmon and the king salmon are only available this month. Plus the arowana, dorado, gar, arapaima, and saw shark all also need to be caught in the evening as well. 
Salmon are very common and pose no problem at all, and king salmon are more rare, but they are pretty obvious to see once you do find one. The nibblefish is more difficult in that it shares its shadow size and rarity with the neon tetra and guppy, so every tiny fish is basically a 1 in 3 chance of being a nibblefish. We're on to 4 p.m. now where we have a doozy of fish to catch. We start with getting an arapaima rather fortunately. And you'd think that the difficulty in getting an arowana would be that I keep catching black bass, but in reality, it's soft-shelled turtles giving me issues. At this point in September, black bass and soft-shelled turtles spawn at the same rate, which sucks for us right now, but actually could be a good money-making opportunity if you were playing casually. While looking for one, though, we did get a Dorado. And then the arowana a couple of catches after that. Then we farm up some more bait for agar, and in the process look for finned fish to potentially find a saw shark. We do get our gar, and now it's a simple matter of hoping that we find a saw shark without finding too many other sharks. With that done, that leaves only six fish remaining. In October, we get three of those, granted that we can find a rainy day, as one of those three is a coelacanth. The other two are a rainbow fish and a pike. In the AM, we get a rainbow fish, and time traveling to a rainy day does get us a coelacanth quite easily. Then in the PM, we need the pike, which is fairly commonly found in the river. The only fish we need in November is the ray, and that's at 9 a.m. The ray can be slightly tricky in that it's yet another fish sharing its size with a sea bass, so getting one of those adds about another 10 to the counter. That leaves only two fish left, the ranchu and the pop-eyed goldfish, both found very commonly in December. As I looked for the ray, I did one final grind for bait and used the rest of it in the pond to catch both of them pretty easily. And that's it! 315 total catches to get all 80 fish in the game. So about one in every four fish that I caught was unique. I'm not sure what a good baseline score is for this challenge, so I guess this is the baseline. The score can be improved by quite a lot if you're willing to have the patience and the skill to try it. I would love to see what you guys can achieve if you do this, and like I said earlier, if you do attempt it, let me know what score you get. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it.